two comedians you wouldn't want to attack because they'd slaughter you. My friend Mark Marin, a comedian host of WTF, the number one comedy podcast on iTunes, and comedian Dean Obidal, who's the co-creator of the Arab American Comedy Festival. Guys, you heard those folks uh, a second ago. Uh, listen, in our business, we call this hacky. We call it unoriginal. These attack ads always run. Do they work, Mark? I mean, are they still really effective after all these years? Well, Pete, the, the amazing thing to me is that everyone knows that there are millions and millions of dollars spent on these ads, so they must be doing something. What's amazing to me about knowing that they spend that much money on them, they're basically creating media to exploit your fear and anger and guide your desire into making a decision. They're there to sell you a product. And I just believe that if this works, that if you're someone who is sitting on a couch and you're on the fence about a candidate and you watch one of those ads and go, well, that seals the deal, you're a moron. You're an idiot, and you should try to regulate what you choose to let your brain process. You should try to be more honest when you're on my show, Mark. Dean Obidala. <laughs> I'm sorry. I, I, was, I, was, I was holding back a little bit. I know what you want me to do, Pete. <laughs> that was fine. Dean Obidala, you're ethnic. Uh, these, uh, these ads are, are effective. Uh, am I supposed to be scared of you now? I, it depends whose ad you're listening to. I mean, look at Sharon Angle uh, in Nevada is running ads that are arguably racist about illegal immigrants, and she's sadly gone up in the polls the last few days. Her new ad says Harry Reid has voted to give Viagra to child molesters. I mean, literally, that's exactly what it says. And it's working. Um, you know, technically it might be right because it's in a bill. These things work. I mean, she's just running ads saying Harry Reid's going to come to the house and touch your children and rape your dog. It might work as well. Now, at some point, the American people have to reject it. If they don't reject it, then it's just like hack comedy, like you said. We're going to keep giving it to them. That's right. what they like, and that gets what? response results, and that's the sad reality. It, it, Go ahead, Wait, Mark. Harry Reid's giving out Viagra? Is that that's not Mark, true? Mark, you I, can't have it. No, hey, Mark, you can't have it. Literally. Uh, all right, guys. You, you, you know, literally, that's what it said in the ad that he voted for it for child molesters. I'm not yeah, it's it been up. it's been fact checked by political fact. It's uh, pants on fire, false. But anyway, you you guys are both news junkies. You couldn't have uh, missed the president of the United States uh, just two a uh, couple days before midterm elections, sitting down on a talk show, on a comedy talk show with our friend John Stewart. Let's take a quick look at it. And in fairness. Larry Summers did a heck of a job trying to figure out how to... You don't want to use that phrase, uh, dude. I saw I was, uh... <laughs> pun intended. All right. All right, Mar Mark Maron, what's worse, that President Obama walked right into President Bush's heck of a job brownie phrase or that Jon Stewart called the President of the United States dude? Well, they're both pretty bad. I think the entire uh, sort of tone of casual desperation on behalf of our president I found... Uh, a little disturbing. I, I do expect a little more out of that office. I, I found the entire thing, uh, I didn't find John disrespectful, but I, I just found it a sad indication of where, you know, you know, comedy and politics mix. I, I, don't, I don't think that the president should be on that show, to be quite honest with you. And I love John, I love the show. I just think it's beneath him, to be quite honest. Uh, and, and Dean, what about this? We've been hearing this all week, guys. We've all been asked this question as comedians who talk a little bit about social issues, politics, etc. Uh, where does the uh, comedy end and the political commentating begin? Do we really have to draw rules, or, or, or should they be held uh, to the fire? John Stewart, Stephen Colbert, and us. Dean? It's about being funny. If you're being funny, you can say whatever you want. If you're not being funny, you're preaching. Just back to John Stewart. Calling the president a dude I thought was endearing. I don't think Obama's a dude. I think he's more like a professor. I think Bush was a dude and Clinton was a player. Those terms would have worked well for those guys. But I think that honestly, as a comic, that's the line. If I'm telling a joke and they're laughing, then, then and I'm making a political point, that's it. To me, it's the highest form of comedy. It's why I admire people like John Stewart and Richard Pryor and Mark Maron. I actually admire him. Um, it, honestly, you, Pete, not as much. Well, thank God. God. That's, that's fair. Mark, Mark Maron, to be fair, is a legend, a, a com legendary comedian in our business. He's always had a lot to say about all these issues. Mark, you used to host a political radio show. You, you do stand-up comedy. I mean, do you get to uh, uh, comment on politics and make jokes, and should you be well, held to a different standard? Well, I think the standard really is sort of you know, along the lines of what Dean was saying, is that if you're a good comic, if you're a satirist, I mean, the job of a good comic or somebody who does stand-up comedy as opposed to being just a, a comedian or a clown, that, you know, your job is to sort of reveal hypocrisy, to, you know, take cuts comedically and, and sort of make an incision and reveal the truth. I don't think it's your job to, to guide policy. Uh, it's your job to help maybe, you know, understand policy or understand what's we... really happening in politics because politics is a farce right now. I think the real... 
concern comes, Pete, is when you know people should listen to comics and, and learn from them and get their mind blown and maybe reveal some truth. But I think we have a real problem is when people start looking to clowns to lead them, We're, you know, like Glenn Beck or Sarah Palin or O'Donnell, that you know you have this clown contingent that is actually you know seeking to lead people and they are clowns. There's a difference between a, a comic and a clown, I believe. All right, guys, well, listen, I gotta move on to one more thing. Uh, you guys both travel a lot doing stand-up comedy all over the country, uh, and uh, internationally, of course, especially with you, Dino Badala, and the whole Arab world. Now, security. Mm -hmm. The TSA came out with new regulations. They can touch your bathing suit areas, guys. And uh, then, of course, yesterday, this whole uh, uh, package scare. Uh, Mark Marin, is there too much security? Uh, didn't Ben Franklin say, when we start sacrificing our freedom for security, we've we've given up liberty or something about that. I mean, is it too much? Is it too little? Is it redundant? What do you think, Mark? Well, all I know is that now that when I, I plan a trip, the day I'm leaving, the TSA comes to my house and they set up the security right at my house. And, and I've so, been told right? that if I, yeah, if I find an, uh, a box that I'm not sure of at my home, I should call the TSA. But I think there's something interesting going on in that you go to airports now, they have full body scanners, Pete. And it, you can, it, it's weird because they give you a choice. You don't have to go through the full body scanner. You can get the pat down, which is what you were talking about. So it's yeah. really, it, you know, there's a lot of issues around does technology sort of, you know, is it a barring intimacy? And, and I think here at the airport now you have a choice. Do you want an intimate experience with a pat down or do you want something detached where you're just standing in a machine and there's a guy in a room laughing at you? So I think that if you get the pat down, you're engaging in, in a type of intimacy that we don't see anymore. <laughs> Dean, uh, Dean, what do you think? You travel in. Go ahead. All right. I, I, I choose dinner and an intimate pat down. That's what my choice. I you don't get dinner with a TSA I, agent? You're unbelievable. I'll anything at this point. I, I'm flying to Dubai next week for a show. I'm not kidding. I, and I, obviously, I can't bring back my toner, wires, oh. and white powder that I like to bring with me. I think you're but both. I, I literally am man. going to Dubai. Well, Dean, I'm going you, to fly next week for a show. When you travel internationally, though, Dean, what, what are the different standards of traveling internationally with their security? I hear the Israelis are the greatest at this because they literally ask you a question. Hey, do you have a bomb on you? What's the difference uh, in, in the security measures internationally and here at home? What do you think, Dean? Over there, they, in other parts of the world, you get patted down and no one asks you a question. There's not even an issue. You go and they touch any part of your body they, they want and there's nothing you can do. And, and now we're going to go back to heightened alert at the airports. And if I can give some advice to my fellow Middle Eastern people out there, if I may, Pete, may I? You may. Uh, at ahead. the airport, they have less problems. My biggest advice to them, my slogan is, remember this, dress white, make your flight. Dress brown, never leave town. And that's the only <laughs> advice I can give to brown people out there because it's we're going back to high alert at the airport. There's going to be pat downs. You're going to go through the airport security naked. They're going to see you're naked. I mean, for Arabs like me, they're going to be asking questions like, do you have a full body cashmere sweater under your clothing? We are hairy people. So it's not going to be a good time for us. It's going to be embarrassing and intrusive. It's not going to be a good time for us. Uh, Mark Marin, you have the number one comedy podcast on iTunes, and yet you've rejected Arab comedians. Do you want to address that with uh, Dino <laughs> Badala right now? Uh, that's not true. I have had, uh, I've, had a, I've had Persian comedians on. I've had a comedian from Pakistan not on. Arab. And I, I'm, I'm, not Arab. Well, I, know, I know that, Dean, but I'm more than willing to reach out as a Jew to you to say, come on my show. Let's bury the hatchet here, Dean. Let's, let's the two of us, we'll sit down, we'll have a comedic summit when I'm in New York and you'll be on WTF. You guys are great. Go to I WTF. Reject your, I reject your truce. Really? Really? Wow. Well, we'll no, have to... No, I'm kidding. Oh, I'm there. We'll I'm have there. to figure this I'm out. There. Go to WTFpod.com oh. for Mark Marin. Listen, that is a really great podcast with great comedians like Dean Obidala, we hope, and ArabComedy.com. Uh, thanks so much, both of you guys. Great to talk to you, of course. Uh, this next woman that